people plant it, and then all of a sudden I can't go anymore. What uh, what happened on they, Animal Planet? Because they show you what goes on or what's behind going the scenes on, when the lights are turned on, ah. you know. And I'm like, Ugh. oh, like there could be bugs or something, or stains and stuff. Well, that does exist. Yeah, uh, I'd have to bring well, like some kind of cellophane wrap. You would need to go. You do <laughs> wrap need, myself. You, you do need to go and see this movie because it really <laughs> it is, is good, awesome. Huh? And I got to oh. tell you, one of the coolest things when the movie opens. Is they have the the twentieth century Fox fanfare, da 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 whatever that is, and they did it in Queen style oh, to open the movie. That is so, awesome. And I just so happen to have audio for you to listen to what it sounds like. Check this out. Cool. I just got goosebumps. That's awesome. I had goosebumps oftentimes through this movie. It was really, really good. If well done, you right? Grew up. It was well done. There's one thing that distracts me a little bit. It's the uh, it's the way the actor they tried to make the actor look like um, Freddie Mercury with the teeth. Oh, oh, and that was a little distracting for me. But beyond that, I thought it was just hmm. an unbelievable movie. Uh, we have a lot to get to here. Manaski, uh, the Giants did not lose this weekend. We did not. <laughs> yeah, very big, very, very big. Uh, this right. morning, we'll talk. Uh, how about we're finally here? We are finally here. Oh, sigh at, of at relief. The, at, the, at the point where it's all going to end, and we found out that Donald Trump Jr. is now coming to town. It's been the whole family, hasn't it? <laughs> if she doesn't win, I mean. She's brought in a lot of. Well, see, my take on the. Uh, uh, on all of it is, I don't think this does anything at all to push the numbers for for Claudia Tenney at all. Um, I do believe it it in energizes her base because there's nobody at this point that's going to come in and say, "Wait a minute, Donald Trump Jr. came in. I'm voting for Claudia." They those people have already. If you're a Trump fan and you're in on Claudia, you're already there. But it does energize the base, and that's what this is all about. They got to get their vote out. So you disagree? I just disagree in that. There's no one that's a Donald Trump or Trump Jr. fan that isn't already with her if they're going to be with her. Well, that's interesting. You know, if you're I, in, I just the, middle, point to if the, you're in the middle, there's a reason why you're in that middle. There's, a, there's something you don't like, whether it's Trump or, or Claudia, and you love Trump. There's that, too. I think uh, the last election showed Trump won this area by, like, what, 15 points? Give yeah, or take double a little digits, bit. yeah. And she won by six or eight, something Five. Like, five, okay. <clears throat> So there's that 10 point difference there and so in in that also the Siena polling last week showed it was like uh a third of Republicans maybe weren't yeah, necessarily on the Tenney train of the so nine of the 9% it might have been 5 or 6% that were uh, that were Republicans so um listen if you're a Republican at this point I don't know that uh, Don Jr is going to change your mind here then again when you get into that voting booth Right. What are you going to oh, do? Yeah. Maybe you're one of those that kind of wonders, boy, I, I'm I, I love Trump, but I'm not for Claudia or or I love Claudia, but I, I, I'm, I, I can't handle Trump. Maybe at that very last second, you just fill in the little box, that says Claudia. Yeah, there's in and in hindsight next week or whatever, whenever we find out if if Anthony Brindisi wins this, you, there's you know, a lot of times I think people will say, oh, if we had done this or this turned the election, this and that. You can't say anything. I mean, I don't president, think President can. Donald, yeah. Eric, I, 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 Paul Ryan. I will tell you, Sarah I, Sanders. I, I do disagree with that, and because I think if you're Brindisi, there's nothing more you could do. If you're Claudia, I don't think she has the ground game that Brindisi has had. It, it, all I can say is, at least in my neighborhood, um, I've probably had a knock on the door from somebody supporting Brindisi. A dozen times in the last month and a half. Hmm. Not a single knock on the door. And, and there are Republicans in my house. Not a single knock on the door at, at my house for Claudia. A lot of robocalls. As a matter of fact, the president did a robocall over the weekend. Hmm. So uh, where does this all take? Anyway, here's the details on uh, Don Trump Jr. You're a Trump supporter. Mm -hmm. where, will you be, but you're not a Claudia <clears throat> supporter. 
I'm not a fan of Claudia. I like, I think Anthony Brindisi is a nice guy, but I think what's going to come down to for me is Nancy Pelosi. Oh, so you fe- you are I on fear. the fence. I fear. Yeah. I fear her. Uh, I have to tell you that actually um, I hate her. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I <laughs> Pretty much I loathe her. Tonight's I believe it's at seven o'clock start tonight. No tickets needed. Um, it's at the beaches in Rome, and that's a big deal. So you're somebody that was anti Claudia Tenney. Now you're on the fence. Yeah, I just I, that so the fear negative of Pelosi. Spots, the negative spots have worked for I you. I mean, that one spot got me. Constitution or Pelosi. Yeah, I gotta go Constitution. All right, you know I'm a patriot. You are a patriot, Joe. <laughs> there is just no doubt about it. Uh, coming up, we're going to talk to Ed Welch on daylight saving time. If you're not in the, uh, if you're not in the right mode, whether and, and oftentimes what it is is your car isn't set properly or Wait, the were one, you supposed to do it Saturday or Sunday? You do it Sunday morning at two. A lot of people officially. do it Saturday when they go to bed. Yeah, that's what confused me. You were confused. <laughs> <laughs> I can it's, never get it right. It's uh, it's 2 a.m. I think I changed it Friday in, in anticipation or something. Well, that'll mess you up. That will mess you up. <laughs> uh, but I have like one or two clocks that don't automatically change now. Everything else changes automatically. Yeah. It's it's something. It's my uh, stove and my microwave. That's it. Uh, also this morning, uh, 640 Tanya J. Powers, uh, the migrant caravan. We'll get an update on uh, on that and how that's been playing a role in this uh, in this midterm, seven forty. There's a new poll out. Cuomo's numbers. He is uh, what? What is his lead now? It's like thirteen points down from twenty two. Uh, that was away. that's really still a lot. Quite it's still a lot, but that's quite a. Uh, I mean, that's within reach. I mean, uh, we get a nice rainy day in New York City, and no one turns out. <laughs> I think Molinero is your next governor. Um, but <laughs> the the fact that it's that close, I think, surprises people. And uh, we'll have on uh, Steve Greenberg from the uh, – he's the spokesperson for the Siena Poll. We'll have him on in the 7 o'clock hour to talk about the numbers. Because uh, there's also information in there on the uh, the Senate race, the U.S. Senate race, the Comptroller's race, and others in, uh, in New York. That's what this poll takes a look at. Shel Farley, by the way, is running for U.S. Senate. She's a Republican. We'll speak with her coming up at 820. And then Mike Mal- or Mark Molinaro. From uh, this is the guy that's taking a shot at Cuomo. Molinero, the Republican, is on just before we leave at about eight forty-five this morning. So I'm excited about that. Ed Welch on uh, from AAA on daylight saving time and how this does kind of mess with people just a little bit and their habits. Ed Welch, good morning. Good morning, Bill. How you doing? Good. So uh, I so kinda... everybody enjoyed their hours extra hour sleep yesterday, right? Well, do you really get an extra hour sleep? No, you wake up anyway. Yeah. You yeah. wake up, so you wake up an hour earlier, right? Exactly. That's exactly kind of how what I happens. Felt. And, yeah. But but like you said, it messes up people, Bill. Uh, it does. Um, so, in what way does it does it mess with them psychologically? Well, I think your you know your body clock gets uh, uh, you know again you're adjusting the regular time clock, but your body clock's already at a certain level. Um, but there's other changes that happen. You know, for example, it's going to be dark today as it was yesterday, but it'll be dark today by 5 o'clock. Yeah, yeah I yeah. hate that. Yeah. And um, what we did at AAA, we, we started looking at the New York State crash data between 5 and 6 p.m., four weeks before daylight saving times and four weeks after we put it in place. In other mm. words, these are, this is data through 2016. And what we found was in New York State, Crashes are seventy percent more likely during that hour. Wow! I, and uh, I've got some local interesting data. In fact, I, I, I forwarded all of it to Jeff. But yeah, uh, I have it here. Yeah, in, in, in the Utica region, I mean, Herkimer County crashes are twice as likely between five and six p.m. four weeks after daylight savings time. Madison County, it's three times as likely. And here in Oneida County, it's two point three times as likely. And this is based on actual crash data that wow. we looked at. So. Uh, Again, uh, you know, everyone might have enjoyed the extra hour, even if they were just lounging around yesterday morning, which is nice. But uh, come 5 o'clock today when it's, uh, you know, coming home from work time or, or going to the store time or taking the kids out for something tonight, uh, some event or something, uh, it's going to be dark at 5 o'clock. Yeah. So really we're just trying to tell everybody to pay more attention to the, to the fact that we have a pretty big change here. Uh, Michael is talking about how this really was uh, enacted based on agriculture, right? And it was, it was, yeah. and uh, I believe Ben Franklin was responsible for this originally. 
Uh, right, I, the guy was responsible for a lot of stuff. He really was. I mean, do we need to do this anymore? I love daylight saving time, to you be do? honest with you. I like it. The, I like the, the more daylight hours we can get, the better. Um, you know, I mean, in the summertime, in, but in June, it's like uh, still daylight at 10 after 9, quarter after 9. You still yeah. have some daylight out there. Uh, I think we should That's enforce, right. like, maybe a curfew for between 5 and 6, no driving. everybody to be a little more careful today and uh, recognize yeah. that... Uh, Five to six o'clock tonight. It's going to be dark. How about uh, Ed, the school bus? Uh, kids standing out waiting for the school bus. This morning it will be daylight. Um, on Friday when they were waiting for the bus, it was quarter after seven. It was still dark out. It, it, it true, and that's the modern reason why we we keep it. Uh, it's it's really to help school kids out in the morning. Uh, originally, you're correct. It was based for agriculture, but. Uh, today's world, that's not a, yeah. uh, a real concern because everything's so mechanized uh, on farms. But uh, we've really kept it all these years because of the uh, school, yeah. uh, early morning school hours. And, uh, again, we're trying to give the kids some extra light while they're standing out waiting for the bus in the morning. I will tell you, my car has a, a – I go to menu in the computer in my car, for God's sakes. And I just click uh, shut daylight savings time off, and it automatically uh, turns. Some cars, it, it'll read through a – through a uh, through internet, it'll read that uh, yeah. it's been it's been changed My switches, and automatically. switches automatically. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, yes. If you, if your car is Bluetooth connected, uh, it'll automatically do that. And uh, but most of us still have to change the clock, and probably not too many guys that still have the old mechanical clock in their car. Bill. Yeah, I, you're, around, you're, I don't think. you're probably right. <laughs> By the way, according to these numbers, in New York State, crashes are seventy cent seventy percent more likely with during that hour. Um, of darkness because it's an abrupt change, right, as opposed to the normal gradual change that we experience. 70% more likely in New York State. That's, Correct. That's and, pretty and big. This is a, you wanted to bring this to people's attention because I don't think we've ever, ever talked about this. No, I don't think we have either. Hmm. Uh, I've never brought it up before, and uh, we were doing some research, and we discovered this, and, you know, we got to talk about this. We've never, ever talked about this. How about the confusion where, where there are a couple of states, I believe Arizona is one of them, that do not participate in uh, in daylight saving time. Yeah, and I think there's one state where the time zone goes right through the middle of the state. Yeah, and, right. Uh, <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it, it is crazy, and uh, you know, uh, I it'll it'll be interesting to see long term if this stays with us or not. But I think it's it's because of the school kids, especially on the East Coast. Uh, I think they'll we'll be keeping us for a while. Ed, normally you're giving the advice. I'm going to give you movie advice. You have to oh, get please out. Please do. Please do. You have to get out and see the movie uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh my God! You know, I, I, I love Freddie Mercury, so I, I have my wife and I got to go see this movie. It is. Uh, it's powerful. It's emotional. It's a great, great movie. So you have to check that out. All right, Ed. I'm thanks. Going to do, thanks a lot. Between you and Billy, Billy Waffle, I can't go wrong. Okay, good man. Thank you, uh, Ed. Thanks. Bye bye. Of course, Ed's uh, Auto Talk program is on Saturday mornings on WIBX. Uh, also, I mentioned we'll talk about that caravan. Uh, how does that play a role in the uh, in the midterms? What do you think? How does uh, Donald Trump Jr. come? Think about it. It's been Trump Jr. Uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders was in town over the weekend. Hmm. Before that, uh, Paul Ryan, I forgot about him. He's been up here. Eric uh, Jr., Eric Trump, that's not a junior, uh, he's been up. Of course, the president was up. Uh, at least five or six big names within the president's inner circle, and this one caps it all off. Um, Don Trump Jr. coming tonight to the uh, city of Rome. 6.30, we'll come back. Uh, update on the news from Manaski next on WIBX. <laughs> Do you know that this race is the most expensive race in New York State? I believe it. Uh, at least most expensive congressional race. It is the, I believe the number is four, the fourth most expensive in the United States. Do you think it's the most watched, though? The no. Most concerned with? I don't think so. No, it's not that big yet? No, no, I don't I don't think it will be. And Because whenever you see on TV, every once in a while you see them talking about this race. but And the focus has been, is now on the Senate race. Yeah. Um, but I, I do find it interesting that we've spent so much because our rates... To buy a TV commercial in in this area or in Binghamton or in Oswego, it is it's far less than yeah. what you would pay in like a DC. We had Ryan Nobles on the other day talking about that. That the, the rates in DC are expensive. You buy a six o'clock news spot on TV, that's going to cost you a lot of money. Here, three four hundred dollars maybe, maybe a little bit more. So for this to be the fourth most expensive congressional race in the country, that's just showing you. How many spots we're looking at? Bill, and every commercial, a lot. They're back to back. 
I can't wait for it to end. I have an, I have, I admittedly don't have the answer to this, but I would, ass- I don't want to assume anything. Do you think that the Tenney campaign pays for? Because I'm sure there's security with Eric Trump, Donald Trump, all these stops, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, and it's got to be federal security, right? So you know how, the, like, there was the talk of. Are they on, uh, the t- I think they might have Secret Service. Do they have Secret Service protection? I, I oh, believe I would they imagine, do. Yeah. But can, I, I'm just wondering, in addition to the money spent on this campaign, how much money from the Tenney campaign has gone to basically the government? They got to pay for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, they, because, they pay for again, certain stretches. Like when the president came, they they he went to Fort Drum, so that was that was paid for because it was. And I think they do this stuff strategically so they save a little bit of money for the campaign. But when he had to come from Fort Drum to here and all the detail here, her campaign had to pay for that. And I'm assuming the same thing would hold true for, for Donald Jr. coming tonight. And Eric, and, or Eric Sanders, Paul right. Ryan, all these people we named. Yep. I think they, they all get, have federal security. Tony J. Powers standing by from Fox News. And one of the big campaign issues that the president has made, and it really seems to be working, is the issue of immigration and the caravan. Good morning, Tanya. What do we know to start the week off? Good morning. Well, we know that uh, there's a group of them, about a thousand of them, they're making a big push toward Mexico City. Um, They are, uh, they took a voice vote last night, matter of fact, in a gymnasium. They're about 178 miles away, I believe, uh, from the capital right now. There's about a thousand members of this caravan. Uh, They're trying to get to Mexico City by today. That would be. uh, the longest day yet for them, as far as the number of miles that they would cover. They that that's they're trying to get there by walking, hitching rides, whatever they can do. Um, you know, they've kind of are hoping to sort of use Mexico City as a place to regroup and yeah. you know collect the the folks who are kind of straggling behind and you know get medical care and that things like that. So they won't even, based on estimates, I was hearing one over the weekend that said we might not see them here. Uh, reaching our borders until maybe maybe after the after the holidays. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. it's going mean, to take a long time to get here. Exactly. I mean, if, especially if you are walking, um, that's a pretty long way to go. There's still about four thousand in Veracruz, uh, and that is still again hundreds of miles from you know yeah. the U.S. border. So, but the president has done a great job, I, I think, of uh, drumming up uh, the fears, especially in those states that deal with uh, those border states, especially. And um, it when when people are being polled over the weekend, the number one issue, one of the top issues is immigration all over again. It almost seems like this is 2016 all over again. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it worked for him then. And so that's exactly one of the reasons that you're hearing yeah. that now. I mean, it's just a. You know, it's a fact. Whenever you have you know politics involved in something, and something works for a, a particular candidate or a particular party, that's what they go back to. Yeah. I mean, it's not just you know, it's not just the president, but that is one of the reasons that we keep hearing this. Um, interestingly enough, one of the polls that we did, I don't know, two maybe three weeks ago, uh, this was a Fox poll. Um, the number one thing was health care. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if the number one thing now is immigration, that's a, a huge turnaround in the last three months because there's there's a lot of people who you know have been concerned about health care, mm-hmm. still need to be concerned about health care. Um, uh, but, yeah, that's you're right. It is a huge talking point, especially before tomorrow's elections. Yeah. Are, is everybody uh, are you guys are you guys all set for the uh, coverage tomorrow? Uh, we are, and we'll of course include uh, Fox coverage as part of part of ours. And you know, we have some some big races yeah. here to uh, keep an eye on. Not only just uh, state and federal, but there's a couple of local races that are big. But I I, I do think turnout's going to be huge, and that's the other yeah. thing in this uh, in this early voting. It looks like turnout has been really really big. Yeah, I think turnout's going to be is going to be really really big tomorrow. I think uh, last I checked, we had some a chance of rain in the forecast tomorrow. Yeah, so I yeah. wonder if that's going to keep a lot of mm-hmm. people away or if they're going to go, no, nope, I'm just, I'm going to go vote anyway. So. And here's the other thing about, uh, you know, so the president is really working up his base, energizing his base with this immigration issue. But sometimes some of the top, the tough talk, like when we, uh, when we've told our military, if, uh, if they throw rocks, think of those rocks as rifles. And mm-hmm. he said that in so many words um, that you, that could also energize the other side. So the question will be, which side is energized enough to come out bigger, and that's the side that's going to win? Yeah, it's it's definitely has the effect of getting both sides riled up. Yeah. It's not yeah. just oh, it's gonna it's gonna get you know his base 
you know, they're, that's going to make them happy. They're going to go to the polls. But it's also, like you said, it's it definitely has that effect. Uh, Tanya J. Powers, Fox News, as always, thanks so much. Sure. Tom- tomorrow's the day. It all ends mm-hmm. tomorrow. Uh, what else? Um, I want to. I have a little audio that I could do from the Queen movie. Did you hear this earlier? You went out in the room and asked you that they took the 20th Century Fox fanfare at the beginning of the movie and they completely they redid it, it up, redid it in Queen fashion uh, for the movie Bohemian Rhapsody. That's awesome. isn't that great? <laughs> Pretty wild. Man. That's awesome. It's a great movie to see. Real history movie when it comes to the history of, uh, of rock and roll. On the uh, 22nd congressional race, Richard pipe in this morning. Yes, he says, uh, let me make sure I get it correct here. <laughs> Please, Tenny wins in a huge landslide. Blowout. Tell Bill it's over for his man, Brendisi. Well, um, he may be right. Or, Does yeah. anybody really know? No. Nobody and, knows anything till the last ballot and, is and, cast. And there's the other element of this that uh, that you don't know about is after 2016, I, I don't think anyone's comfortable in any prediction. No. I mean, you can do your polling, and, and certainly that polling has been done. But I don't think anybody is comfortable in any prediction. I'm hearing a couple of other races might be closer than thought, hmm. like the county clerk's race. But that's a big one. Like a couple of the assembly races. Uh, in particular... The uh, the race between uh, two candidates that we never get to talk to, uh, Dennis Bova and Marianne Buttonshawn. I was told, based on polling, that's much closer than anybody ever thought it would be. Oh, interesting. And, you know, on the ballot there is no hospital downtown. That's one of the, the key. Uh, Bova's all in on that. Yeah, I think that's a killer. Uh, a killer? Yeah, like, I, I mean, anybody... Do you think it should be downtown? Yeah, yeah. progression yeah. here, folks, progression. Oh, over the weekend, um, uh, President Trump was modest in his uh, in his comment about Alec Baldwin. Did you see what happened oh, with yeah, Baldwin? Yeah, did you see Baldwin went all spaz? So Wait, he, what happened? He, I he claims, claims, freaked he, out. He claims he did not punch the guy. I saw the pictures. Did I think he was the, in a swing mode. I didn't see that. Oh, I, I saw one. He was actually in the swing mode. So you I did see whether that? the guy dodged it or not. Yeah. Can you send me that picture? I'll find it. Yeah. Because I was I was going frame by frame through the TMZ video to see if I could see a punch and I and I didn't. Um, but I'd like to. He's <laughs> claiming never ha- happened. This was a clickbait scam. That uh, he was. This was over a parking place. You're saying and, uh, he got baited into it? You well, think? I'm not saying Oh, that's that. what he's saying. That's what he's saying. Oh. So, of course, the reporters, when speaking with the president over the weekend, asked him if he had a comment about Alec Baldwin's arrest for allegedly punching a guy over a parking space. And the president was somewhat uh, <laughs> subdued in his statement. Here's what he said. Alec Baldwin, he punched somebody out during a parking dispute. I wish him luck. I wish, I him, wish luck. him luck. <laughs> that was it. Wow. I wish him luck. Whoa. And I don't think he was on SNL uh, for, on Saturday night. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they said, uh, I think he was scheduled. I saw a headline that said, uh, Baldwin's Trump a no-show after arrest or something like that, or, or parking dispute. Yeah, and they had to, re- which meant they ended up redoing, I'm assuming, having to redo their, their cold open. Wow. And uh, from what I'm told, it was not. It was a, uh, it was a Fox News open. Um, mm. I, I'm told it wasn't over. I didn't see it. Until it wasn't well, over. I mean, isn't he, he's an angry person anyway, isn't he, though? Uh, he has had a huge history of uh, swinging at uh, paparazzi and <laughs> yeah. reporters. Uh, you remember he called, there's a, a report out right now that says a an ABC reporter claims that uh, Baldwin told her, I hope you choke and die. <laughs> I mean, all the it's all the dirt's coming out now. I'll tell you this, though. This is just my opinion. Saying to someone, I hope you choke and die, is a lot different than, than punching them out. Than punching them out, yeah. yes. Uh, on SNL, I think it's anger management issues. On SNL, oh, yeah. over the weekend, though, they did not hold back. And they went after him. And there were several jokes about uh, about Baldwin during Saturday Night Live <laughs> over the weekend. So, And I'm pretty sure this story broke Saturday. Um, yeah. It might have been during the day Saturday because it was like 1.30 in the afternoon in New York City. 
Um, what else did I want to squeeze in here? SNL, this uh, Pete Davidson and his breakup with the Ariana Grande thing. Why uh, Comedians should be comedians. Don't go serious on SNL. It's and I think so he bad. went serious. I yeah. think he, he, he talked audio? about her. I do. She's a great person. She's a great person. Great. Oh, stop it. I, I don't know why he's doing this. What is he? He's making a fool of himself. Here's so here. the midterm elections are obviously a huge deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and after I had to move back in my mom, I started paying attention to her. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a good line. That is okay. good. Funny. That's yeah. funny. Well, let's yeah. leave it there. All let's right. leave it there, right? Yeah. <laughs> And the last thing I will say is I know some of you are curious about the breakup, but the truth is it's nobody's business, and sometimes things just don't work out, and that's okay. She's a wonderful, strong person, and I genuinely wish her all the happiness in the world. Now, please go vote on Tuesday, all right? I don't like it. That's the millennial appeal. That's what I he's don't like it. To do and love me tender, uh, love me sweet. Michael a- is asking, and maybe even asking, you know, the question of this: Will Fox be covering Fox News in New York? Be covering the United County Clerk's election? Um, do you think they'll cover that? No. You sure? I'm sure. It's a biggie. Who's <laughs> um, <laughs> so- all prepped for a serious <laughs> answer? What am I going to say? What am I going to say? No. no. Uh, so on that race. Close? I, I Close actually, er? I actually don't think so. Um, you and, and and with in favor of of Sandy uh, DePerno of the incumbent. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I do think um, you either support Dave Gordon or you don't, or you you hate the clerk's office or you don't. I think most people understand it's more than just a DMV issue. Um, Mr. Gordon's run for several things. I think most of the voters are familiar with him. I think if they liked his agenda or his stance on things, he would already be in office. Uh, th- and there's no hmm. personal bias in there. It's just he's run for several things and has not won. I know, as you he said very a, well. He has had a good topic. And, I mean, everybody, there's very few people that are going to come out and say, you know what, I love the DMV. Oh, I do. I, I love my trip. Do. I love my trip to the DMV. <laughs> oh yeah. So they, it's like going after the cable company. Hmm, we've heard that one this, this oh, season, too, haven't we? Sure. It's always it's it's pretty uh, I'd call it like red meat, yeah. pretty easy, low hanging fruit. fruit. Yeah, and um, <laughs> and and then on the other hand, you have a couple of other local races in the assembly. The race between Marianne Buttonshawn and Dennis Bova. Uh, I think. Um, what is your take on that? I'm damned if I know where either of them stand. I'm hearing <laughs> close. I'm just kidding. Bova, we know is against the hospital, but aside from that, I think um, she's made a big mistake. Uh, in the beginning, I, I thought it was a brilliant move to to basically n- kind of fly in on, under the radar. That's the strategy, and, and based on what I'm looking at. And she doesn't do interviews. We can't get her to come on. We've never had any. I mean, we we've talked to her. You've talked to her. Pleasant conversations. Everything's all positive. But at the end of the day, we can't get her um, really? on the radio. Uh, Dennis Bobo won't come on because he's angry over something that I said. Uh, that seems to be the typical way. We stomp our feet and we cry like a baby. How and, and uh, whine and that's but it. But I think they've done a better job of getting there. Again, we do better with an, a negative message. Negative messages always do better than positive messages. The negative message is that hospital can't go downtown and he's claiming everybody's a criminal. So what are you? <laughs> what? I, I'm just saying. Uh, you're not hearing anything from Marianne, Marianne Buttonshaw. I that, would go right after if that. that is the, if the race is close, it's because of that. If she wins, maybe it is because of that. Uh, maybe it was a good strategy. But I'm not sure you can call this one right now. No, I don't think you can. And it's hard for us to be able to say, well, we've spoken to both sides. And this one really carries themselves so much better than the other. We really can't say that. No. Um, you have the, uh, the Brian Miller race. Uh, he seems to be... In a pretty safe position with uh, his opponent there, McAvoy, out of Otsego County. And then over on the other side, as if crazy isn't crazy enough, you have a candidate who is uh, possibly going to be sent to uh, uh, indicted by a grand jury. Um, And that's uh, in Robert Smullen after that veteran's exemption that uh, he doubled up on and wasn't supposed to. He'd been arrested over the summer. He ends up winning the primary. And now he's going after uh, going against a young kid out of Herkimer who's who was a Bernie Sanders supporter just two years ago. Much Dave like Gordon? much like Dave oh, Gordon oh, in okay. Keith Rubino. And now Rubino is coming in as a bit of a moderate Repo- or moderate Democrat. Um, 
but probably doesn't have much of a chance to to win that one. Hmm. He's pushing the uh, you know let's get everyone on the same page. Let's all work together. Obviously, that district is very heavily Republican. Uh, of course, the state majority is is very heavily Democrat in the assembly. So it'd be interesting to see how that comes out. Well, and also that uh, the the it, it used to be that that district really was was stronger in our area, and the way it has been divvied up um, when you take a look at it after redistricting, uh, it's stronger over in the Johnstown uh, and into Hamilton County area. The they they outnumber those making their way down uh, down the. The Mohawk River over into Barnerville is where that uh, district actually actually starts. So Smullen has a great deal of support in, in that region. That's how he beat uh, Vincent back during the primary. So uh, I don't think Rubino has much of a shot. But there are some interesting races out there. And it all means you got to get out and vote. And maybe before you get out and vote, you, you go and hang with Donald Trump Jr. tonight at the beaches in Rome. Oh, I wish I was off. Because that's what's going to be uh, going on. He'll be there at 7 p.m., and who, who's his? Is that his girlfriend? Uh, Kimberly yeah. Guilfoyle, yes, formerly they kind of are, News. They're traveling all over the place to uh, together. It seems so. Hmm. Uh, listen, having her on your side, by your side, it can't hurt you. It really can't. Hold on tight. We're coming right back. Next hour, we'll talk to uh, uh, Steve Greenberg on the Siena poll. NY twenty two. Um, here's the headline, uh, which is um, in Forbes right now. Still too close to call as of this morning. Um, and that's uh, midterms. That's Democrats taking control of the House. Um, the Senate, uh, still too close to call. Uh, the Senate it w- is a pretty tough, would be a pretty tough challenge. Uh, but the House, what he says is, according to the latest, uh, latest data, Washington Post, ABC News poll, 71% of registered voters feel the economy is in good or excellent shape. 44% give President Trump a positive job approval. Uh, Democrats have to win 15 of the congressional districts that are considered to be toss-ups, which appears, he says, to be doable. However, just a quick survey across those districts shows too many of them are just simply too close to call. Florida, 15, is tied. NY, 22, and 19 are both one-point races, just in uh, as the Alaska at large in Pennsylvania is a one-point race. Nevada, 4, is a two-point race. So these are so close, and with a, a margin of error of around 3 to 5%, um, this thing could go all, either way, but it's all going to depend on who gets the vote out. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're, if you're Brindisi, you're outnumbered. Republicans outnumber Democrats in the, in the 22nd, so you really have to get your vote out. And I think they've been doing an incredible job on the ground. Um, uh, just just by based on the number of people you see out there knocking on doors, hmm. I heard an interesting story over the weekend. I've heard from two people in my neighborhood that had somebody knocking on their uh, on their door for Brindisi. Uh, one had a wonderful conversation; the other one was kicked off the porch. So that's how heated this is, right? Crazy! Get off my porch! So I had. Um, a representative from each party, this was about a month ago, come knocking on my door, and both asked me to sign something. And I told both, I said, look, I work in the media. I, if, if I, Even if I liked your candidate or I didn't like your <clears throat> candidate, if I signed something and then it came out, people would be like, you know, I, I just I don't want to be involved. Thanks. Thanks for stopping by. And I'm not so shy <clears throat> myself. Why, do, are you picking a winner here? Are you backing somebody? Uh, it's. It, Personally, if I'd like somebody to win, if I'd like someone not to win, are you asking me that question? Are you really? I can't no, believe kidding. you even asked me that question. I'm kidding. You know he loves it's Captain Claudia. Obvious. You know, um, I will tell you that um, it's two completely different strategies, and and however, the strategy is duplicated across the country when you really look at it. So the race that's getting run here is the incumbent Republican which should not be as tight as it is, most likely. You wouldn't think it would be as tight as it is, but it is. Um, she's all in 100% with the, with the president. But when you get on the throughway a bit, Katko, um, not doing that, not handling that same type of, kind of distancing himself a little bit from, from the president. So it all depends the makeup on the makeup of your, of your district, and this one leans Republican. So sh- her strategy is all in and bringing in big names like Donald Trump Jr. to cap it off. Brindisi, on the other hand, we talked about this very early when the president first came. Who does he bring in? Who can he bring in, in his be- on his behalf? Really, no one. 
and, and and this is being duplicated across the country. Any of those areas that are strong Trump areas and it's a competitive race, they don't bring it. The Democrat doesn't bring anybody in. And the reason is because that would not bode well with with a moderate Republican, which yeah. they need that moderate Republican in order to uh, in order to win. So Brindisi's strategy has been on the ground, just knocking on doors, canvassing the area, getting the vote out. Uh, it will be interesting to see which which strategy actually works and is most successful. Hmm. Really excited by tomorrow night, and and it, it's possible we won't know who wins in some of these races tomorrow night. They're so close. Yeah, but the campaigning will be over. Thank thank goodness. The commercials will be over with. You know what? I never they understood. should dissipate by around. After the 6 o'clock news, they should just pretty much go away. Can't you give away, like, freebies at the polls? Is that illegal? It is, oh, yeah. So, like, you can't say, come on down, get a candy apple hey, or something. Uh, yeah. you know, everyone, everyone who votes for me gets an 8 by 10 glossy of right. the president. <laughs> uh, signed, by right. the way. Or come on down and we'll pay you to vote. You oh. come in, everybody who walks through the door Give gets, them a ten spot. gets ten dollars and a chance to win ten thousand. Oh. Yeah, you can't <laughs> you can't do that. Darn either. it. Tonight Broadway Utica is going to take your mind off politics with something rotten. Uh that show is tonight and tomorrow night uh on stage at uh, the Stanley. For ticket information, I think there might be some tickets still available. Three one five seven two four seven one nine six for Broadway uh, Utica. Uh, what else did I want to get into here this morning? Jim Zecca could not be happier, um, right? Is there anyone any happier than Jim Zecca? The president has been here. Sarah Sanders has been here. And now Don Eric has been here. Don Jr. will be here tonight. And I have probably received 50 emails since yesterday it's when like this released. Full house for From him. Jim Zecca. <laughs> yes. He is all yeah. in and excited. There he is with a photo with uh, uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Um, there he is with Claudia holding on to a giant head of President Trump. <laughs> <clears throat> it's all in. And, and, and the, the flyer that's out is, mm-hmm. says, get out the vote rally for Congresswoman Claudia Tenney with Donald Trump Jr. and Kimberly Guilfoyle Monday, 7 p.m. at the beaches in Rome. And it's free and open to the public. No ticket is needed. You know, you, you make a funny, that's a funny there about uh, Trump, uh, Trump, Zeka playing poker. He lays down his cards. He goes, I got three Trump and two members of the administration. Full house, baby. Yeah. Full house. Full house. <laughs> I, uh, I, was thinking, uh, I was thinking last night um, of, a, of a new game. You know how you'll have, uh, like, go fish? Uh-huh. So you take go fish, and you can play this game tonight, and you can turn it into a drinking game if you'd like to, or uh, tomorrow for Election Day. You take go. What you do is you collect all the, the probably 100 direct mail pieces that you have that have ended up in your mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 some of them are duplicates, and maybe you get a friend who has gotten them as well, and you come home and you you do a game of of go fish. So you put them all on the bottom, and you ruffle them all up, and then you grab one, and then you try to match them, right? I like Isn't that, that how idea. go fish works? Yeah. yeah. I've and if got, you match it, you drink. I, I've got two of the one with Claudia with with the yellow uh, hard hat on. Um, oh, I was looking for that one. Or maybe oh, some of these. I got direct, the motorcycle. I maybe the hard hat. Maybe some of these are uh, are, oh are God, good, will be collectors' items down the road. I mean, who knows? Uh, either way, <laughs> there's your uh, there's a new story out, and I thought I'd bring this up with Joe right here because I, I'd be I'm interested in his take today versus years ago. Um, the pediatricians, the uh, what is the group called? The American Academy of Pedi- Pediatrics has hardened its stance. When it comes to spanking as a punishment. So they're against it or for it? They, the new policy statement published in the Journal of Pediatrics on Monday. The pediatricians group recommends that adults caring for children use healthy forms of discipline, such as positive reinforcement of appropriate behaviors, setting limits and setting expectations. And now they have come out and are unequivocally saying not using spanking, hitting Slapping, threatening, insulting, humiliating, or shaming, which just completely ruined Joe Lode's playbook. Mm. What are your thoughts? Do you spank? A little bit, I do. Now, again, if I were to spank my son, uh, it's it's tantamount to literally a yeah on the wrist. Okay, yeah. I'm He's not sure wearing would, a diaper. I'm not sure I would call that spanking. Although, do you put him over your knee and? No, I don't put him over my knee. But there are times where I'll, I'll take him on the arm. 
and I will Maybe spank a... his backside. Again, yeah. he's got a diaper on. It, if I hit you in the chest with that force, you wouldn't even move. Right. You'd be like, okay. it'd be like, hey, saying what's up. Like if you're in a football game, you're like, hey, what's up? You know, it's but it's me stopping him, grabbing him, and I think demonstrating that he's done something wrong triggers for him. Okay, yeah, I've done. I mean, mm-hmm. again, I do not hit him hard by any stretch. But there are times where he like he realizes it's wrong and he starts crying. Do you do, do, you do the timeout? Uh, the timeout the thing? Timeout. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, that's the way to go. Now I, I you don't do the belt. No, I got the uh, belt. I did. I do kid. too. Joe, uh, I mean, we might as well hand these kids trophies every time they do something wrong. Now, here, little oh, Johnny, take your trophy. Good job. You, you were see, bad. Uh, as I said, why I wanted to bring it up with uh. Joe. Are you? But you're you're a dad now, and yeah. It, well, my my kid probably is close to kicking just, my ass, though. Yes, so, I get that. I mean, at however, this point, however, when he was younger, did you spank him? No, because again, he was oh, a, so big you know, tough guy. Well, no, do he it. was older than the spanking, and my wife would have killed me because she's in charge. Right. Fair enough. All right. I mean, you have to pick your battles. But, I mean, you're, but let me ask you. If without, I had a kid without, from birth, without, I probably would have spanked. Without spanking, has he turned out to be respectful and a, and a good kid? No, he's a good kid. Yeah. 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 And respectful? Yeah. Very. Yeah. I, I didn't. Well, because uh, I think maybe he knows, though, deep down that I you will. Could, you could really punch him at right. any time. I don't know. <laughs> it could happen. Uh, the policy statement updates <laughs> guidance is published in 1998. So it's the first time since 1998 that the pediatrics group has come out and come out uh, with a policy on spanking. In the 20 years since that policy was first published, there's been a great deal of additional research, and we're now much stronger in saying that parents should never hit their child and never use verbal insults that would humiliate or shame the child. Hmm. Like, what are you, stupid? That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. I think that's one of your favorites. Uh, According to Dr. Robert Sage, first author of the policy statement and pediatrician, at the Floating Hospital for Children in Boston. This is much stronger than previous advice. The new policy encourages pediatricians to discuss the data about different kinds of discipline with parents. Of course, they can make their own decisions in how they chose to raise their children. But this is the recommendation that there should be no spanking. My son will be three in three weeks, and I'm wondering how they would advise that I handle this. So Carter and I do quite a bit of uh, wrestling, not like pro wrestling, like where I'm body slamming him or something. You know, I do some, you know, flipping him around, put him on the couch. You know, and he does whatever he does to me, and then he knocks me over, right, whatever. So he walks up to me the other day and... Tough kid. Bang, right across yeah. the face. I mean... He slapped you? Oh, hard. And and started laughing. I mean, like, he left a, a handprint on my face, and it it hurt, you know, and he's not even three. So I took with my left hand, I just kind of... His face back. And again, it was something where I stopped... You could tell by the look on my face. I grabbed him by his shoulders. I said, Carter, and then I said, you don't slap people in the face. And he started crying. I said, you don't like it either. Now, again, it was not a hard slap. It was not a smack. So was what a- they're saying is that's not their recommendation. Their recommendation would be to severe timeout, explaining what the kid did wrong, and saying you don't do that and you have to sit, and making them sit. But what about the golden rule, the... Treat others how you like to be treated. I'm trying to well, show that, him. Well, that is the golden rule when you think about it. I'm not, and listen, I'm no big anti-spanking person. Yeah. I was spanked as a kid. Um, I heard that belt buckle. I knew what was yeah. coming. Yeah, uh-huh. However, I never spanked my kids once. And I have, I, I feel like we were very strict, however. Extremely strict and follow through, I think, is the key. When you say, I'm going to get up off that couch. Had I not been so lazy sitting here with my chips, I'd get up off that couch and I would correct you. And I think that that's the problem that we, that we end up having is, is, you, is we threaten a lot. You do that one more time, I'm going to – but you never do. I think so that one I, time I was at your house and you you were disciplining one of the boys, I, I actually cried because I felt like I was in trouble <laughs> too. <laughs> but that's not the golden rule, though. Is the, it golden the golden rule is you treat someone how you would like to be treated – do you, that which means you don't slap him in the face. Well, no, I'm, All right, but I'm what showing if, him you don't like that, to be. But you've done what? Can I, can you, I make the point? But, you don't but, like to be slapped. So this is what. So here it I'm feels going like. to do to you what you shouldn't do to others. Well, Andres. because what happens? All I'm saying if you're is older. when you look at the at the definition of the golden rule, you would never slap back. You would say you would explain to them why they shouldn't be doing it, but you would never treat someone else differently than you would want to be treated. And spank and slapping them back in the face. I'm not criticizing you, Mike. Yeah, no, no, I know. All I'm telling you is golden rule is a bad example because the golden rule is just the opposite of what you did. 
but how does he know the, what it's like to be slapped in the face if he's never been slapped in the face? And how does he know he doesn't want that done to him? Until I, I, I think that all it. works out. I think you should you follow don't the rules. To... Spare the rod, spoil the child. <laughs> that all works. I don't want to be the guy giving all the advice because I certainly have made my own mistakes. Um, and but if he went and, through life thinking, okay, I could do slap you him, think he's never going to know the definition of pain. It's gonna. No, I don't mean it never. There. But I don't. And, least, I don't and, want him walking around preschool smacking kids. Well, in the head, that's though. why you make it very clear that you don't do that. Well, they'll be the one kid that smacks him back, and, and then he won't do it no more. And the punishment that he receives is he sits on it in a chair for five minutes or whatever they say the it's a minute for every eight, every year or something like that. But um, you know, I'm again. I've I once my my son punched my younger son, and I remember we're walking into to Walmart, and I took my right arm and. I, just kind of backhanded him right in the stomach, and I knocked the wind out of him. It was, and I was angry because the hitting happened a lot. And so I don't want to come off as this great parent because yeah. I probably wasn't. But I'm like, don't you dare, Ben. You're walking in. You walk with me. No crying. I don't want to hear any crying. You want to hit your brother like that? That's what it feels like. And we walked into Walmart. Now, I regret doing that. I probably shouldn't have done that. See, my father mastered the um, uh, reach around to the back seat, give you a backhanded oh. cup, and still stay in the lane how, thing. How, I don't know how that happened. How how long those arms became from they father? They were huge. Most fathers and I was on the other side. Stretch Armstrong. I don't know how they I'm do like, it. I'd throw a sister in front of them. I'd always get hit. <laughs> Somehow it always happened. Must have been the old cars. Man, that's 76. Easy to re- reach around and, and grab. Uh, I don't have time to get into the debate on spanking, but I would like to do this later in the week after we can talk about something other than politics. But, you know, there are some say that, hey, we'd be all different today. The world would be a different place if we all just spanked our kids. All I'm saying is these pediatricians saying that's not true. I have a free money question coming up in a second. <laughs> and we'll, My uh, mother used to get the needle right in the uh, tongue. Can in you the tongue. I've never My heard grandmother of would never hold her that. tongue and put the needle right if in there. If she said something. Yeah. She'd pin, pin. Pair with she a needle. She was the original tongue piercer, that grandma. And I. <laughs> she was wow. a spitfire. Don't I've do that. I've never one. heard of that. I wouldn't I will, do that. I will not do that. Yeah. You will not talk uh, back. Seven, <laughs> you will never say that again. Jam. <laughs> we'll break. Coming up, a free money question from the Hovica Law Firm. We'll get to that. And Steve Greenberg is the spokesperson for the Siena poll, which is out. And you might be really surprised at the governor's race. Is it possible that Mark Molinaro has a shot? Uh, new poll numbers, and Steve will break it all down for us. Coming up at WIBI. 740 and Hovica, the Hovica Law Firm, 315-724-1600. Um, each morning gives us a chance to win cash. Thursdays are 500 bucks, every other day is 100 And here being Monday, Debbie's going to take a shot at 100 bucks. Good morning, Debbie. Oh, good morning, Bill. How are you? Wonderful. You ready to go? I'm ready to go. All right. All you have to do is answer this question. Within seven seconds, before the buzzer, and you win 100 bucks from Hobanka. Here Great. is your question. Farouk no. Balsera was best known for being a member of what? Ready? Go. <laughs> Farouk, Farouk, Farouk Balsera. I don't know. WWF. I don't know. <laughs> Anybody uh, want to take a guess on yeah. that? Wasn't that Freddie Mercury's real name? That is the real name of Freddie Mer- Mercury, Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, mm-hmm. Debbie, though, we'll give you, because uh, I'm obsessed. I saw the movie last night, so it's all I'm worried <laughs> about. Uh, we're going to give you um, uh, well, uh, 72 Tavern and Grill. I'll give you a gift card over there, which is connected oh, to the right. Adirondack Bank Center. You'll love it. It's a $25 mm-hmm. gift card, okay? Mm-hmm. Thank you. And if Thank you'd you. like, I have Comets tickets. For oh, yeah. Wednesday, Wednesday night, we'll give you a pair of tickets. It's WYBX yeah. night. Oh wow! Sit tight. You could yeah. do you could do the tavern and the Comets game on I'm Wednesday. I'm excited. Oh my god! I'm right. excited. Yeah, I want to be that? a loser too. Yeah, losers are good here. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> losers are good. All right, Debbie, sit tight. Davey's gonna hook. Davey's gonna hook you up. Thank you. And for all of those who didn't play the contest, of course, our Ariskany Garage Tire and Auto Service contest continues. All you have to do via the WIBX 950 app. Send us the correct answer. So today's correct answer was uh, was part of Queen, right? Uh, Queen. Was Queen. Was the, Queen. Uh, we'll take that answer. Queen. The group Queen. So just go to the app. Open the app on the left-hand side. You'll see a drop-down contact. Send me an email. All it has to say is Queen at the end of the month. Someone's going to get a total break job from Ariskany Garage Tire and Auto Services. 
So thank you very much. Pretty simple. All right, uh, Steve Greenberg standing by on the line right now. Very interesting saying to see the uh, poll numbers in the race for governor in New York State. Uh, it's changed a bit, and it's a tighter race than it certainly was last month. Steve Greenberg uh, Berg, uh, is part of the Siena poll. Steve, good morning. Good morning, Bill. Great to be with you. So I think a lot of people were surprised by these numbers. Uh, the governor has a, what, it's about a 13-point lead right now? That's exactly right. Uh, heading into Election Day, 49% of likely voters say they're with Cuomo. 36% say they're with his Republican challenger, the Dutchess County Executive, Mark Molinaro. 7% are with the three minor party candidates and 7% undecided. So tightened up, as you pointed out, uh, it was 22 points uh, a month ago. It's now down to 13 points. Uh, that said, it's still a double-digit lead heading into the final days of the campaign. And really the difference, what we saw was Republicans have come home. Uh, a month ago, uh, Molinaro was garnering the support of less than 60 percent of Republicans. Mm. Now he's up to three quarters of Republicans say they're with Molinaro. So Republicans came home and independents shifted a little bit. They sided with Cuomo a month ago. Right now, by a seven point margin, uh, independents say they're with Molinaro. Yeah. So between those two, that's what we that's what accounted for the tightening. And it's uh, so the, the first thing I would ask you is, is there a way to transfer that to some of these congressional races or is Cuomo a character all of his own? Well, it really depends race by race. I yeah, mean, yeah. in some of these upstate CDs like, you know, uh, Penny, mm -hmm. uh, Brindisi, uh, Faso Delgado, uh, uh, Collins, uh, McMurray out in western New York. Uh, Cuomo is probably not the best thing that the Democratic candidates are looking for. On the other hand, on some of those races downstate in uh, Long Island, in uh, Staten Island, uh, Cuomo can be very helpful to the Democratic candidates there because he's doing strong there. Yeah. How about the uh, the uh, I mean, I, I would imagine this has a lot to do with the approval rating of Cuomo, which um, based on all of the scandal and everything, cannot be something that he gets to hang his hat on, his hat on. Well, for the first time ever since he's been governor, now nearly eight years, more voters, 49 percent, say they view Cuomo unfavorably than view him favorably, 45 mm. percent. Uh, last month, time. he was above water, 50 to 46 percent. So a shift there as well. Uh, what are we looking at when it comes to, uh, we'll have Shell uh, Farley on later on this morning, and she's taking on uh, Kirsten Gillibrand. Uh, Gillibrand with a, a pretty strong lead still, right? Yeah, uh, 23 points. Last month it was 32. That nine-point tightening, again, was Republicans uh, coming home a little bit to uh, Farley. Uh, last month she only had 60% support among Republicans. Now she's up to 70% support among Republicans. But it's interesting, Bill, what we see is – Molinero right now is getting 36% in the horse race. Farley getting 35%. And in the race for AG, AG between the Democrat Tish James and the Republican Keith Wofford, Wofford's getting 37%. So we see those, those three of the four statewide Republican candidates all lumping up in the mid-30s there. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, you have three, uh, back to the governor's race, you have, you have three uh, candidates that are also running, uh, in addition to Cuomo and Molinero, Sharp, Hawkins, yep. and Minor. And then you have uh, an unknown in there. So 7% of likely voters are undecided. Un undecided right now. But then on top of that, you've got another 7% that are going to these uh, these. Uh, whether it's the Green Party or, or what have you. Do they move at all? Do you think that moves between now and tomorrow? Well, certainly the undecided goes away. There is no undecided on Election Day. When right. you go into the booth, you, you either vote for a candidate or you don't vote in that election. Um, but I think it is likely that we, generally speaking, third-party candidates do better in pre-election polling than they do on Election Day. Yeah. In this case, however, I think we're, we're going to be pretty close. Four yeah. years ago, Howie Hawkins got 5% of the vote on the Green Party line. This year, you have three candidates uh, competing for those uh, voters who are unhappy with both Cuomo and Molinaro. 
Uh, and so the notion that they, the three of them will split somewhere around 7%, I think that makes sense. Uh, how about uh, when you go back to when Cuomo started, his approval rating, based on your polling, was at 77%. It is now... In his second month in office. Yeah. yeah. It's now 49%. Boy, that is quite a... Uh, a uh, 45%. Well, it doesn't surprise you, though, quite does a, it? Quite a move. Well, with all the controversy and all the scandal around it, I, yeah, I, I guess you aren't surprised. No, and, and we, de- we do tend to see this as well. His, his favorability rating dropped to its then lowest level right before his reelection in 2014. But by the beginning of 2015, his, his uh, favorability rating had, had climbed back up. We'll see if that happens again this time or not. And I'll ask you one more on uh, this is the 22nd. Is there anything that comes out of this polling that would lead you to believe there's a trend in favor of the Republican or the Democrat and, the, and specifically in our congressional race or any of the, the races that are upstate? No, well, certainly not in the in the uh, Tenny Brindisi race. Yeah. Look, uh, we completed a third poll in that district last night uh, uh, with the New York Times upshot, and what we had in that poll was Tenny forty six, Brindisi forty five. Wow! Uh, mm-hmm. Two weeks ago, it was the opposite. It was Brindisi forty six, Tenny forty five. Uh, a month before that, it was Brindisi forty six, Tenny forty four. This race is neck and neck. When voters say their vote doesn't matter, point them to this district and say their vote can yeah. affect whether Claudia Tenney gets reelected or Anthony Brindisi beats her and, and uh, you know, pulls off a Democratic upset in that district. So I would urge all of your listeners, Democrats, Republicans, get out there and vote tomorrow. So let me ask you, uh, is that poll posted as of, uh, as of yet? Because that's brand new. It is. Yeah, it is brand new. It was completed last night. Okay. Uh, if people go to the uh, New York Times upshot, uh, they will see that race right up there. Okay, very interesting. And, of course, still within the margin of error, uh, it means this thing oh, is, is tight. Now, one thing to note is Claudia Tenney has Donald Trump Jr. coming tonight uh, to get the vote out. Um, uh, be interesting to see if that plays any role in what happens tomorrow. Well, look, this is what it all comes down to. For the next 24 hours, it is all about which campaign, the Brindisi campaign or the Tenney campaign, can do a better job of identifying their voters and getting them to vote. Four years ago uh, in this race, um, the turnout was 45 percent. Two years ago in a presidential election, the turnout was 73 percent. So, you know, What's it going to be this time? Yeah. Will will we get a higher than usual midterm election turnout or will we not? And and if we do get a, an increased turnout, which most forecasters are predicting, who are those new or increased voters? Are they Democrats? Are they Republicans? Are they independents? It's going to be very interesting. All the people, uh, all those in the know are, are predicting that this might be the biggest midterm turnout we've seen in in several years could go back into before the 1960s Hmm. so uh does that it's we're calling for rain sometimes that does play a role it will be interesting either way steve have you ever seen such a highly contested midterm uh since you've been doing this no i mean you know look uh just in new york alone forget about what's going on nationally we have the race we've just been talking about new york 22 between tenny and brindisi just off to your east you have new york 19 between faso and delgado we completed a poll there with the times upshot last night as well that's also a one-point race in that case the democrat has a one-point lead over the incumbent uh, uh, John Faso. Look out to the West. We have the 27th CD, Chris Collins, a very Republican seat. But Collins uh, was indicted in August. So right now that looks to be about a three or a four point race. Yeah. Uh, we have close races down in Staten Island on Long, on, on Long Island. So I've never seen this many uh, tight house races in New York uh, during a midterm like this now. Now, they're saying, uh, I'm looking at the New York Times poll here right now, that uh, about 506 people, so it's a bit of a smaller sample, uh, saying that each candidate's total could easily be five points different um, if everyone were polled in the district. But I find it interesting, Claudia Tenney, 46%, Anthony Brindisi, 45%, still that 9% 
undecided. That number hasn't moved. No, and it's and it and it's you know the the the, the majority of those undecided voters are Republicans. They are struggling right now. Hmm. Do they vote with their party? Because a lot of them are uh, uh, support Trump. Uh, they are Republicans. Do they go with their party and go with Penny? But there's a, a group of Republicans who just don't like Congresswoman Penny, and so they're struggling right now. So, again, come Election Day, there is no undecided. Voters will either get a choice to yep. vote for yep. Penny, Grimdesi, or not vote. Or not vote. Boy, Steve, uh, anything you want to add? Fascinating. Uh, and to grab you this morning when this poll just came out wow. uh, is pretty awesome. And thanks. it's true. There is that undecided. Really interesting. Steve Greenberg, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Vote. Get vote out there tomorrow, and vote. Folks. That's right. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, Take that, care. Okay. We'll be posting that Siena poll uh, coming up. 46% Tenny, 45% Brindisi, 9% undecided. Ooh. And it was conducted with, they made 17,000 phone calls and were able to get about 506 responses. And that's what they came up with here this morning. Hmm. Wow. Breaking news right there. It's still a dead heat. 7.53 at WIBX. Uh, Jerry Neary's in the studio right now. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thanks for having me again. Uh, we are nearing the end. We are. And this, this We're is Jerry nearing the end. <laughs> Jerry right. nearing right. the end. Um, you're running for Supreme Court, right? That's uh, right. In, uh, in the district is the fifth? Fifth Judicial District. Fifth Judicial District. Yeah. And explain for those that wonder, because they're going to be a bit confused on this. Yeah. There are eight on the ballot, and you, you select four. That's correct. There's eight on the ballot. You can select any four you'd like. It doesn't matter where we well, are. Well, not any four. You'd want them to select. Well, all right, three and three and myself. Three and you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that's where you would uh, you would go. Uh, explain what you uh, what your role is in Supreme Court. So uh, Supreme Court, uh, to explain it to most people, I like to explain people that uh, sometimes they, they'll watch commercials on TV and you see all the books behind the lawyers uh, when they're trying to get people to go to, to hire them. And you'll look at those books and you say, hey, criminal law, there's three or four books. And surrogates law, there's three or four books. And family law, there's three or four books. And then all the rest of those books, that's Supreme Court. Okay. So, so we handle medical malpractices, personal injuries. We handle uh, medication over objection. We handle election law. We handle arbitrations. Uh, so we handle the highest uh, civil cases that you can have. That court uh, has been pretty busy this year with election law. The court's been very busy with yeah. election law, and we've been in it. Uh, <laughs> so you have uh, – and, and there are races out in western New York where uh, we're – uh, candidates were just knocked off the ballot. We saw one here in Oneida County that was uh, an assembly race where the candidate was knocked off the ballot. This has been a pretty active year for the courts. Yeah, it's been pretty active, The uh, especially in New York. In fact, down in New York City, uh, they had four candidates, two incumbents knocked off the ballot. And wow. uh, it's just uh, been a very busy year. Everything's becoming more and more technical in all of our lives. Um, yeah, people yeah. are looking closer at election law. Election law is supposed to allow the electorate to have a choice. And it really shouldn't be decided by the courts. So we really have to have a view of, of keeping people on the ballots if we possibly can. But we can't allow the system to be uh, to be somehow overtaken by improper improprieties. So it's a really, really delicate balance for us. What kind of improprieties uh, do you see? Well, what's mostly happening that I've seen is that uh, when people are going out to get signatures, uh, they're not really following the rules as far as signatures. You can't have other people sign for you. Uh, you can't not be a notary or you can't, you know, not see those things happening. Other things that have happened uh, downstate, uh, when they have these meetings, so, for example, in the Supreme Court race, when you have a uh, – when you have representation, so you put people there as your representatives yeah, to yeah. pick your Supreme Court justices. When you do that, they have meetings. And the letter of law, the law may say, well, you have to have a meeting. And when you have this meeting, you have to have a convener call it to order. And then once the convener calls it to order, the, he has no other duties, and then it should be turned over. Well, if he has somebody help him call it to order, like in our case, it's really no harm, no foul, because yep, there's yep. no uh, intent to do mm -hmm. anything that's you know not proper. So it's very interesting. It's a tight. It's a tightrope. It's very hard for the judges. Yeah, we we rather have everybody do it right. But our goal is to keep people on the ballot. I want to ask you on on one particular race here in uh, the assembly race. It's uh, Dennis Bova, 
versus Marianne Buttonshawn, and Chris Salatino was in before the before the primary was uh, ended up being thrown off the ballot. Some are saying that the courts took away the people's right to to vote. Um, I mean, how, how do you answer that? I'm not asking for I'm asking for a legal opinion versus you put me on the spot. Opinion. I can't I can't talk about cases. It, it's it. an impropriety for me to talk about any cases pending or otherwise. Um, all right. So I can't. The only thing I can say is that all all a judge can do is look at the totality of every situation yeah, yeah. And, and try to make a decision based upon that totality. Um, you know. It's tough as a candidate. I'll tell you right now, you work so hard and you're out there and you're trying to do the right thing and get everything done. And other people work with you and, you know, you really can't control what other people do. But guess what? We're responsible for what other people do. It's really, really tough. I've heard it. I've heard it said both ways. Number one, I've heard people say, you know, we should just uh, this is it's archaic. The, the signatures, we could do things online. It's archaic. On the other hand, I've heard uh, critics uh, of those people saying, well, if you can't get this part done, how are you ever going to serve in office? Right. Yeah, I mean, it's a test of will, that's for yeah, sure. I yeah. mean, if you don't have the heart or the gut for this stuff, uh, you really shouldn't get into it. You know, I told somebody last night, I was at at a uh, uh, a place where they were, getting all the candidates together and there was four officers, police officers. And, you know, I had a history of being in the police department yep, yep. and uh, there was four police officers in a room and a couple of them were running. And I said, do you guys remember when we went to the Academy? We thought that was the hardest thing in the world. And they all said, yes. Mm-hmm. And I said, tell me this wasn't harder. And they yeah. all said, yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's really, it's you were really the difficult. youngest, uh, the youngest police chief in New York state. New history. York state. Wow. Yeah. 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 I was very, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I've been blessed. You know, my father died when I was four and, and, uh, my mother raised us, and uh, she worked like three jobs. And you know, we we come from immigrant family and um, from Italy. And my uh, and and the work ethic is what got me where yeah, I was. Yeah. So you know, I, I was very blessed. I've had a great career. It's been it's been awesome. I mean, you know, being able. I went to law school while I was in the police department. And being a young chief like that, we brought in a lot of new ideas and stuff. We've it's been fun. All right, <laughs> uh, I'll give you the last word here. Why people should uh, vote for you as one of the four candidates. Uh, in this upcoming race for Supreme Court, 5th District. So the most important thing is you should put candidates in that have some experience. And the experience is not only in the law, but life. Mm -hmm. So myself being a basketball coach, I used to teach in uh, the school districts. Uh, I've been teaching judges for the last uh, 10 years in Supreme and Family Courts. I uh, have a lot of broad-based experience. I have five kids where I learned most of my stuff from, and now I have three great, three grandkids that, that I love to death. But, uh, you know, one thing you should always do is follow what your mother said. And my mother always said to me, you treat people nice because they're somebody's relative, and it'll come back for you. And that's yep. what I've always done. Oh God, I All right. that saying. That's the <laughs> Italian thing. Uh, Jerry Neary, <laughs> thank you and good luck. Uh, you you'll, Thanks, you should know me. tomorrow night. Uh, we, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. We, we all hope that it ends tomorrow night. Thanks. So. God bless you all guys. Right. Good stuff. We'll all break. Right. And Thanks. coming up, we'll speak with Shell Farley running for the U.S. Senate. New polling numbers are out there. We're going to get her comment on that coming up 820 at WYBX. I'll tell you, I don't think there's ever been a time where every single vote matters more than it does right now because... It is so tight. I, I just think that it's so important for people to get out there and uh, and cast their vote tomorrow. Right. Don't think your vote doesn't count. We're going to have does. some. We're going to have some really big. I think some really big turnout. Big. Uh, Shell Farley is running uh, for uh, U.S. Senate, and she's running against Kirsten Gillibrand, and she's on the line right now. Shell, good morning. Thanks for coming back on. Bill, it, it is great to be here, and I agree. I think we are going to have big turnout. Um, the expectation is that 4 million New Yorkers will vote statewide, and typically the Republican and conservative candidates get a million and a half votes. Uh, but, gosh, um, you know, President Trump got 2.8 million votes statewide, and if all of those people come out and vote, um, you know, we'll win in a landslide, and yeah. that is what I'm hoping happens tomorrow. I have to ask you, in the 22nd District here, Claudia Tenney has, this will be a third Trump today. She had the president. She had Eric Trump. Donald Jr. is scheduled to be here tonight at a rally. This weekend, Sarah Sanders was campaigning in the district for her. And House Speaker Paul Ryan has also been here. Um, Have the Trumps been on your campaign trail supporting you? I know the Senate is a big thing for President Trump. Uh, he's, He's saying that they will keep it. Have the Trumps been on your trail? What are the big endorsements you've got? Absolutely. Well, in fact, actually, the president came out for me big at that event for Claudia. 
He said, you know, That's Shell, right. you are working you. hard. I see you on TV all the time, and on the merits, you should win. You know, your opponent, Senator Gillibrand, I know her quite well. She is very aggressive at getting campaign contributions, not so aggressive at getting things done. I mean, what has she actually gotten done? One bill, one bill to rename a post office. He said, look, like I did in November, I think you're going to surprise a lot of people. And so here we are. Um, yes, Claudia deserves all of this support and help. And um, I think, you know, we need somebody who can actually work with the president. Do we think that Senator Gillibrand is going to be able to work with the president? Not at all. You know, she has literally voted against more of Trump's nominees than any other senator, more than even Bernie Sanders. It's ridiculous. We have this new NAFTA agreement that Chuck Schumer said was a good deal. I was meeting with a bunch of farmers in western New York, and they were like, we love this deal. We need to get it passed. But there is no way that Senator Gillibrand is going to be able to vote for it because she can't agree with anything that the president comes out with. We need somebody who can actually work with the president and get things done for New York. And that's what I want to do. And so, please, I'm asking for your vote tomorrow. I'm sure you're uh, you're making several of these uh, phone calls today. It's a it's a very busy time. I do want to I, wanna, I saw your debate. I thought uh, you performed very well in the uh, in the televised uh, debate that was on uh, last week or just the week before, I believe it was. Uh, but a poll, a new poll came out yesterday over the weekend um, and from Siena showing you with a 58, 35 percent deficit. Uh, what do you say to that? And, and that's a big number to make up. Well, actually, it's not in terms of actual numbers of voters. So as I said, we're expecting four million people to vote. Um, I'll get a million and a half votes. That's only another 500,000. And if all of the if all of the Trump voters you know, come out and vote, that will increase that number. We can win. Um, as you know, I've come out with a you know, tax deduction for renters and also want to increase the cap on homeowners. I mean, the average state and local tax deduction um, for New Yorkers, state and local taxes paid is $17,000 a year. But right now you can only deduct $10,000 off your taxes, which means people are getting hurt. I want to increase that to at least double it to 20000 let renters take up to $3,000 a month off their federal taxes um, in their rent payments. Um, and I want to bring that money back to you know, create good uh, middle-class jobs and lower everybody's taxes. These are things that really need to get done. And right now we, we have a senator who talks a lot but never actually gets yeah. anything accomplished. Do you think you, so, could, yes. do you, think you could work um, uh, with I – mean, we don't know where the House is going to go – but uh, do you think you can work across the aisle to get stuff done for upstate? Obviously, with the, with the tax bill, we're a, we're a high-tax state, which puts us at a very big disadvantage with, uh, with the Republican tax bill. What, what's your thought? My thought is definitely, I mean, I, I, I joke that, you know, my husband is a Democrat. I, uh, I reach across the kitchen table every night. <laughs> uh, we can absolutely do this. But I think so much of this is that, you know, we just need to come up with pragmatic practical solutions and try things and move on. Instead, there is just constant talk and nothing's getting you know, accomplished. I mean, I tell people, if you want to stop the dysfunction in Washington, you cannot, you've got to basically elect new leaders. You reelect the same leaders who created these issues, you're going to have the same problems. That doesn't work. You know, we've got to finally, you know, go to the last mile and get, you know, broadband technology, you know, to every home. Um, that has not happened. People say there isn't enough money. I'm like, actually, there is enough money. It's our money. Yeah, right? and, yeah. and I was I was in Binghamton. I was in Buffalo, you know, meeting with groups. You know, the opioid crisis is a huge problem. We need more treatment centers. And they're like, there isn't enough money. I said, actually, there is enough money. It's our money, New yeah, Yorkers' yeah. money. And I will bring it back to New York to spend here. I have to say, uh, you bring up the, the broadband uh, Internet. My parents, um, who do not live out in the middle of nowhere, no. do not have the ability to get cable or high, high-speed Internet. They, it's not available to them on their road. It's unbelievable at this day and age that we're still there. Wow. Absolutely. And if you look at, look, President Eisenhower spent all that money building a highway system out. This is the 21st century superhighway. Right. Yep. Right. We need to do it. I understand. But it's like it has to be done. And in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't cost that much. I mean, we could do the entire thing. Right. With New Yorkers money yep. that New York is losing to other states. And I bring this up constantly. And, and it's like, look, no one, you never hear her talking about it. And she certainly hasn't been able to get anything passed. I mean, this is the issue. I mean, the dairy bill was the very first bill she proposed as a member of the House, right? Didn't get passed. The existing dairy bill just expired. She's a member of the Agricultural Committee. How could she, how could she let that happen? Right, especially I mean, uh, like we, when you're up for yeah. re-election. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh, all right, Joe, I know you have a busy day on the way. Good luck. Get that vote out. 
Absolutely. I'm asking everyone, please go out and vote tomorrow. Um, I am asking you for your vote. I'm Shel Farley. I have the Republican, conservative, and reform party line, and I can make a real difference for New York. So please vote for me tomorrow. All right. Thanks so much for taking the time with us through the, the whole campaign. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Great talking to you, and I'm happy to come, come on um, after, the, after tomorrow as well. All right. Let's do it. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Thank you. Shel Farley, uh, you'll see her on the ballot for U.S. Senate. That'll be on everybody's ballot coming up tomorrow. 8.30, hold on tight. Uh, we're still going to talk to Mark Molinero, who's running for governor on the Republican side. His numbers, the Siena poll shows him tightening this race uh, it's tr- really significantly. It's still a 13-point difference, but it was 22. So interesting. We'll get to it with Mark Molinero coming up at WIBX. <laughs> Happening tonight. Uh, it's a night of soul, a tribute to the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin. Uh, which will be tonight at the Schaefer Theater at MVCC, and it's to benefit MVCC programs. Uh, You'll hear from the band Showtime and some of the area's greatest singers performing Aretha tonight. It's going to be an awesome event, and I believe it starts at uh, 7 p.m. Also on the the Trump, Don Jr. coming to town. Uh, Doors open at 7 at the beaches in Rome. He will be uh, starting at around 8 o'clock or so. So, and we've talked back and forth about how much one more Trump coming to town or Sarah Sanders and Eric Trump, how much uh, effect that will have on the race. It's all about one thing. It's really about getting the getting the vote out. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So I think in the district, uh, I don't have it right in front of me, but material I've been reading says in the district, Trump won by 16 points. In the district, the last election, Claudia won by single digits. I don't remember the exact number. Did you say it was five points, six yeah, points? Yeah, five. Something like that. Um, now, again, it was a three-way race then, but polling does show that just because you support Donald Trump doesn't necessarily mean you're, you're backing Claudia Tenney, and I think that's the big well, Trump push here. Well, that's that 9% undecided yeah. that they're trying to pull over, pull across the finish line, is I think the way that I, I had put it. Uh, the president did pipe in on Alec Baldwin being arrested. I'm told there's a photo out there. I, I haven't seen it yet, but there's a photo of, of Baldwin actually throwing a punch. He says he didn't throw a punch. It was over a parking spot in New York City over the weekend, uh, and a reporter told the president about it, and this is how it went down there. Alec Baldwin, he punched somebody out during a parking dispute. I wish him luck. I wish him luck. That's about, uh, that's about all he said. Over the weekend, actually last night, I had a chance to see the movie Bohemian Rhapsody. Listen to these guys. Now, this was at a time when, uh, when he had, uh, Freddie Mercury had AIDS. And it was towards the end of his career, um, ultimately towards the end of his life. But listen to the performance they gave at Live Aid back in 1985, the band Queen. It is really quite unbelievable. A couple of things in the movie I, I had a chance to uh, read up on. Um, uh, the movie's unbelievable. Willie Waffle gave it three and a half waffles. Um, it's an awesome movie. I highly suggest getting out to, to see it. But um, it's, there are some things that are inaccurate. Uh, should I talk, talk about a couple? Yeah, yeah uh, because uh, and a couple uh, they'll they'll show that he just before they did Live Aid that they the band had broken up. He was going to go off and do a solo career, and he was dragged around by the wrong people. They they really get into that, uh, and there was a battle over should he do a solo career or should he not, and a battle within himself. Um, and ultimately, the band got back together. They make it seem in the movie as if the band got back together just for Live Aid. And he had just informed the band that he had uh, contracted AIDS. Turns out to be that part isn't true. And they had actually been touring a couple of months. They'd gotten to better, back together a couple of months before that and were already doing a tour when they played uh, Live Aid. So yep. there's a few things in there that are inaccurate, but, man, it's a good movie. I also saw something else in that uh, regarding Mercury's solo career that uh, it was made to be a big deal in the movie, that, like, would, would he break away, would he not do it? But they, I read something that other people in the band had already put out solo albums of their own before mm. he did, so yeah. that going off and doing your own thing wasn't necessarily taboo, especially at that time. The season six of House of Cards debuted on Netflix over the weekend, and I'm not going to read any more because I haven't seen any of it. This will tell you how they get rid of Kevin Spacey, but I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to read it either because I don't, I don't want to know. I want to watch for myself. Sometimes these spoiler alerts spoil it for me, which is why I look the other way. Yeah. So kind of like, like with the Bills last year where they were actually in it. If I couldn't be home to watch the game, I'd be 
I'm not going to look at my phone, no text messages. Now I just automatically know they're down by 20. <laughs> so I, it doesn't even matter. It's unbelievable. They've been outscored 103 to 20 oh, it's been bad. in the last three weeks. Yeah. Can we please bring uh, Josh Allen back? Uh, what else do I want to get into? Ryan Reynolds trolls Hugh Jackman with a fake political ad they put out over the over the last couple of days. Here's a little piece of that. Hugh Jackman's upcoming performance in The Front Runner has fooled some people into thinking he deserves an award. But before voting begins, some people should consider these facts. Hugh Jackman isn't his real name. It's Hugh Michael Jackman. Hugh Michael speaks with a charming accent, but he's actually from Milwaukee. He then uh, walked obviously, off the... you, uh, there's a, quite a few of these. Uh, there was one uh, parody that I think is old that I, I saw again recently where the candidate comes out and, and basically says, Hi, I'm, uh, I don't really believe in anything I say, but I'm just saying what our polling tells me that I should say in order to get you to vote for me. Uh, <laughs> it's a pretty cool parody, and, and that's out there as well. How about uh, do you think the NFL has gone soft? Um, maybe we should be looking to the Canadian Football League to show us how it's done. An offensive lineman for the Ottawa Red Blacks named John Gott celebrated a touchdown against the Toronto Ar- Argonauts on Friday night by running to the sideline, chugging his girlfriend's beer, and then crushing the can on his helmet. Gott described his plan after the game. Here we go. John got a beer. He made short work of it, too. Well, that's... That might be legend status right there. That's pretty good. It's a very Canadian thing to do. And then you crush it on your head. <laughs> but clearly this was well orchestrated, and his girlfriend had that one waiting, and here you go. Chug, chug, chug. That beer went down, no problem. All right, John, I'm going to give you the choice to make. Either the name John Got a Beer or Stone Cold John Got. Hey, they put that music on. I kind of felt like Stone Cold right there. It was cool. I saw I saw my girlfriend down in a log cabin, so I just had to do it. All right. Uh, well, I don't think we'll be seeing that in the NFL anytime soon. No, I don't think Although so. there were a couple of uh, celebrations yesterday that uh, drew flags. Some of these guys, I mean, at this point, you don't, you're in the middle of the season, for God's sakes. You don't know what you can and can't do. The, the, the hip groinal gyration... That ain't going to fly. They're going to flag you for that every time. I don't think most of the players care. They're like, I, I guess a maybe. Down. Yeah. You I don't be care right. if you find me or not. Uh, like a live yards. albino boa constrictor was found in a donation bin at a Goodwill Center in Fort Worth, Texas last week. It was curled up in some clothing, not clear if someone dropped it off by accident or to get rid of it, but it definitely didn't wander in on its own. Luckily, the assistant manager has experience owning exotic snakes, and he's taking care of it. Here he is, along with another employee, talking about what they discovered. I'm the one that went and got James the loud knock on the door. <laughs> and I just told him we needed him down here immediately. We got a snake. Well, I hear a loud pounding on my office door. <laughs> and uh, Randy over here says, we need you right now. So we come over here and we see the snake. Like, as you see on the pictures, curled up on the, on the black beds that we have here. And then uh, that's when we try to get our plan of action going. Um, that would scare you, right? Absolutely. I'm, yeah, I'm not a big, of big fan of snakes at all. Uh, a couple more before I uh, break here for a Monday morning. It's been nine months since the Eagles won the Super Bowl. And a report out of Philadelphia says that the city is experiencing a surge in what? Uh, Giants fans? Births. Oh, Births. yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. could be attributed to Eagles fans gleefully celebrating the big <laughs> win by doing it. Oh, boy. People um, like celebrating during happy times, so this is one way to celebrate. I did have a patient two weeks ago who named their son Carson, so it's becoming a, a popular name. It's really cool. It's fun because it's our hometown, our Super Bowl. We won, and now it's something fun to do for the town and our hospital to have all of these new babies here and celebrate them for the Eagles win and for these families who have new Super Bowl babies. How many of these uh, these parents decide to use like an Eagles name to name their kid? I'm sure there was. Uh, give me some. Give me some. They have a couple interesting names on the Eagles. They have uh, who's the quarterback? Carson Wentz. They have Carson Wentz now. now- now they just got the receiver from Detroit, Golden Tate. Yeah, they have they have some interesting names, although Tate wasn't there before. A but. high school teacher in Georgia was doing a chemistry experiment on Halloween featuring a pumpkin, a ramp, and a fire, and she set herself on fire. Her students filmed, and it looks brutal, 
But she's uh, so this is where we are today. The the teachers on fire and the kids are doing what? Helping recording. put out the fire? No, they're recording. recording it. Here's a fellow teacher, a student and an administrator. Teacher at Duluth High School in Georgia conducting an experiment on Halloween using fire and a pumpkin. When the fireball then ignited, engulfing the teacher, setting her hair on fire, she suffered minor injuries. To Ms. Cook, get well soon, and to any other teacher that is, is doing experimenting and stay safe. We were doing a chemistry project, and um, it's supposed to go through like the pumpkin fire. When it went down, it exploded and it got all in her face. And so we're looking into what happened and to make sure that something like this doesn't happen again. And one more, you know how uh, schools here deal with uh, with cell phones. Uh, I told you you're not supposed to have a cell phone. They take the cell phone is away. Is that how it is? Um, it depends on the school. Some schools will allow cell phones. Some schools don't allow them at all. Yeah. Some schools, it's a bit of a privilege in certain classes. Others, it's just carte blanche. It's whatever. See, this was going back, I mean, 15, 17 years ago. You could ago. never have them. I could not yeah. have them in high That's school. That's I would have lot. to imagine it's so a part of everyone's life now. In Central Africa, they treat it a little differently. The rule is no cell phones in class. And what they do if a child brings a cell phone to the class is the teacher pulls out a hammer in front of the students, puts no, it on the desk, no and smashes way. that sucker. No way. That would not be able to happen here. But here's a little audio of what it sounds like. He's... That is a teacher smashing a kid's cell phone. I told you don't bring a cell phone to class. That better be a free flip phone. Yeah. Okay. If that's a th- if that's a one thousand dollar ten iPhone ten. I uh, I got a break. We'll come back. We've been told Molinero, Mark Molinero, is running way behind. We're going to try to squeeze him in before we break uh, here at nine o'clock. Uh, but it's almost over. Heading to election day tomorrow. We'll wrap this up for a Monday morning next on WIBX.